everybody. As you know, Halloween is fastly approaching and because of this, I wanted to do a video on bones, blood, and brains. <laughs> so, more specifically, I'd like to talk to you guys about the circulatory skeletal and nervous system and it's difficult to talk about these systems without touching on some of the other ones you know your digestive system your organ systems etc respiratory because they're all interdependent but I just wanted to focus on these three make it kind of short and interesting but fun and I have my my skull to show you parts of the brain when we get there so let's jump right into the skeletal system and I have on my Nightmare Before Christmas t-shirt with Jack the skeleton. <laughs> I love that movie. I also really like Coraline. <clears throat> so I have a picture of the inside of a bone and it's important to note that bones are living, growing tissue made of collagen and calcium phosphate. They have a spongy area, <clears throat> which is a little softer, got tiny holes in it. Calcified bones are hard but not really solid. You've got red bone marrow that makes your red blood cells and your white blood cells and platelets. It turns to yellow marrow when there's marrow when there is a lot of fat deposited. So as you get older, you typically have a little bit more yellow than when you're younger. The periosteum is um, an outer tissue layer, like a membrane of the bone. So, basically, uh, our body takes calcium from our bones when we need it. If we eat something really acidic, we our blood will pull some of the calcium out of the bones and use it as a buffer. Calcium phosphate is a, an excellent buffer against acidity. And when you have excess calcium in your blood, or your plasma when it's absorbed through your um, intestines into your blood. The calcium is redeposited into your bones, so it's important to eat calcium to keep your stores of calcium really high. And I wanted to let you guys know that because oftentimes we hear Oh, you, you need to eat, to eat calcium, it's good for your bones, but that's why it's because your body takes it from your bones and you need a way to, you know, redeposit it and have a bit of a surplus because oh, when you reach a certain age, your bones lose the ability to, they're not malleable anymore and they lose the ability to uh, properly use calcium from the blood set at a certain point. So if you're younger than 30, please make sure you get enough calcium. Okay, moving on. That wasn't very spooky, was it? I have this skeletal system picture. And it shows your ribs, your clavicle, your scapula, your sternum, uh, your 
humerus, radio ulna, and down to your legs, your femur, tibia, fibula, patella is your knee bone, then you have like your metacarpals, and uh, metatarsals, metacarpals, and metatarsals. Some people have like carpal tunnel syndrome. It has to do with their wrist bones. And I have this little guy. <laughs> the skeleton from Halloween. And you can see his scapula, his sternum, his skull, pelvic bone, femur, tibia, and fibula, uh, humerus, ulna, radius, then you have, did I leave anything out? Your clavicle. So, little creepy skeleton. <laughs> We're actually, um, throwing a Halloween party for my niece and nephews, so I just kind of started decorating and it was my inspiration for this video, I kind of threw it together last minute, so I apologize if any of the information is outdated, it's been years since I took anatomy, so I'm just doing this very briefly. And I have this book, because I love books, and I wanted to show you guys the skeletal system, and it's on page two. your skeletal system and I just wanted to show it to you in this book because I like the way the book sounds. And this is the cardiovascular system part of it. It's the heart. Which is um, amazing. The heart. So I'm going to talk about the cardiovascular system very briefly because system it basically works like this you have blood that brings nutrients hormones proteins chemicals uh, good chemicals to every cell oxygen and like I mentioned before your red blood cells which carry hemoglobin which is like this little um, structure that has pockets that oxygen fits into perfectly and it transports it. So your red blood cells are important because they carry this hemoglobin globin, and it comes from your bone marrow. Your white blood cells or your leukocytes fight infection and your platelets help with clotting and like, yeah, they come to the rescue if you get cut. Your plasma is like a yellowish substance as part of your blood and it mainly comes from, it mainly pulls nutrients from your small intestine which has a semi-permeable membrane and your plasma absorbs these nutrients and transports it to every cell in your body through the blood. So how does it do such an amazing thing? The heart. The heart is so important. Basically your heart has a left side, your left ventricle and your left atrium, and a right side, your right uh, atrium and your right ventricle. And this is your aorta and your pulmonary vein or your pulmonary artery. Yeah, 
in their pulmonary vein is the blue. So, basically, uh, I have a picture of the things in the blood cells too I'd like to show you. I don't have a picture of the hemoglobin, unfortunately, but this shows the, just some different blood cells. This is your typical red blood cell, your platelets. These are sent from your lymph nodes. So, the left side of your heart receives oxygenated blood from your lungs and pumps it through your aorta, through your whole body. It goes from your aorta to like your arteries and your vessels and capillaries and deposits oxygen and everything through your whole body, all your cells which need it. And in exchange it picks up waste, metabolic waste in the form of carbon dioxide and it comes up to the right side of your heart and into your right side of your heart pumps it into your lungs where you exhale the carbon dioxide inhale oxygen and your blood picks the oxygen up takes it to the left side of the heart the left side pumps it through again so that is the cardiovascular system in a nutshell do I have any other pictures of the system? This is 85. So, here are your arteries of the skull. And these can cause a headache when they become inflamed, or if you're dehydrated, or for many reasons. And you can see, like, how many there are bringing oxygen to your brain. These are the arteries of the neck and the head. It shows the part of the aorta coming up and carrying blood. And these are the veins of the head, which are carrying the carbon dioxide back down to the heart and lungs to be re-oxygenated. So that is your circulatory system. And now we're going about the central nervous system, the brain and spinal cord. Okay, so you have sensory nerves and motor nerves. Sensory nerves are stimuli that are received and sent to your brain and motor neurons are um, basically carry out the actions that the brain tells it to. And um, I'm going to show you the parts of the central nervous system. which is your brain and spinal cord, and then you have your peripheral nerves. So we're kind of kind of focused right now on the brain and spinal cord and the parts of the brain. Let's see, page 10 shows the whole nervous system. There's a lot of pictures in this book, and I wanted to just show you a few, so forgive me, but I had to write them down. central nervous system, the spinal cord, and the brain. And the brain itself, I've got a really great picture of that. systems and stuff that I'm skipping over because I wanted to kind of keep it 
correlated with Halloween. I know it's not very spooky and I think I will do something maybe a little more spooky, but I did draw my inspiration from Halloween. Here's the brain and it basically shows you lots of different parts including the forebrain which contains the cerebrum I'm looking, it doesn't really show that here this one shows like your olfal olfactory um, bulb and olfactory nerves and your optic nerves olfactory are your, um, your smell your smelling nerves and the optic nerve is your eyes and it shows all of that there all the different nerves in your brain so your brain can send signals to these for different functions your olfactory nerves from your nose can transmit to your brain a chemical that your brain can identify so your forebrain has your cerebrum it doesn't show here your thalamus and your hypothalamus and your hind brain has your cerebellum, your pons, and your medulla oblongata. Whoa, my camera just went like really out of focus. I don't know, it just happened. That was really weird. Maybe there was something outside, or my hand did something. That is not pleasant what it's doing. I hope it hasn't been doing that the whole time. I apologize for that. But I'd like to move on if that's okay. <laughs> if you're watching this, that's really obnoxious. I'm really sorry. Okay, so we'll use And it shows, this is your frontal lobe, your parietal lobes, occipital, and your uh, temporal. We're not going to go over, um, we already did the skeletal system, I'm not going to go into the, the exact details of the skull. I just kind of wanted to talk more about the brain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's supposed to be a scary sound. So something cool, um, your frontal lobe is associated with reasoning and planning, parts of speech, and I'm going to cut this back a little bit. Parts of speech, motion, your parietal lobe is associated with movement orientation, recognition, and perception to stimuli. Your temporal lobe Perception, recognition of auditory stimuli, your memory and your speech, um, and your occipital lobe is your visual processing all the way back here. Your corpus callosum connects your right hemisphere to your left hemisphere, and there is a picture of this right here. the length of this. Okay. And the reason you have wrinkles in your brain is because it enables your brain to grow and to store more information and neurons efficiently without expanding your brain. It can increase its surface area without, because your skull will not allow your brain to grow any bigger 
and in some cases there are people who do have parts of their brain, and I think it's like Chiari is what it's called, and it pushes against their skull. It's incredibly painful and dangerous. So, let's see what this shows. Different. Alright, your cerebellum is this part right here under your brain. It's also known as little brain. And it's associated with coordination of movement, posture, and balance. And that shows the different lobes. to show if it had the limbic system, which is like your emotional brain, and it has like your um, thalamus, your hippocampus, hypothalamus, amygdala, and those are all part of your emotions. They're responsible for releasing norepinephrine and other um, stress hormones, like if your body, if your limbic system senses different things, it, it, um, sends out different cues in your blood. I don't see it in here, the limbic system. Okay, kind of, where it shows the corpus callosum, callosum. kind of shows where some of your, um, it shows your thalamus here. Things, it shows like your pituitary, pituitary gland is part of your, part of your emotional limbic system. Okay, so enough about that. Uh, let's see. Next thing. Oh, here's a good picture. shows your hypothalamus, very little, your hypothalamus is linked to pituitary gland, stress hormones, fight or flight reactions, your hippocampus is right here, and it turns short term memory to long term, your amygdala ties memory with emotion. So when you recall something that was a pleasant experience, it makes you happy. It evokes happy emotions. And your thalamus, which I showed you in the other picture, sensory and motor signals. And your brain stem, which comes out under here, under your cerebellum contains the pons and mentula underneath the limbic system and it controls vital life functions such as breathing, your heart rate, your blood pressure. your body's 
neurons send cues to your brain and vice versa. So basically, your, your neuron cells are trying to always maintain equilibrium in their ions inside and outside of their semipermeal membrane. Um, typically they keep sodium out and potassium in, but there's m generally more sodium, so there's generally a slight a negative voltage in your neurons. Now your cells might receive a chemical signal from something and it needs to act. Like it might receive it from your brain because you've decided you wanted to lift your hand. So your brain sends a signal to your neuron to open its sodium channels and when it does this your sodium because and um, ions like to go from area of high concentration to low concentration. Your sodium wants into that cell and it moves really quickly and it causes a um, positive charge. Your, it goes from a slightly negative voltage and the posi positive ions increase and this causes a depolarizing current, which is like a spike um, in this current enables potential, which is basically, um, if the depolarizing reaches, a, if it's depolarized to a certain threshold, then your neuron will react. So, pretty crazy stuff, pretty elaborate. The human body is incredibly fascinating. Everything is interdependent. Your body knows what to do with the food you eat, what to extract, how to consume oxygen, make memories. It's just crazy to me and fascinating. This video was interesting and entertaining and relaxing, like I said. I'll probably do a spookier one, maybe like next week, like a couple days before Halloween, so be on the lookout for that. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. If I got a fact wrong, please do not berate me. I'm only human, and like I said, it's been a really long time since I took anatomy and physiology, so, I mean, it's been like 10 years, so, I just did the best I could, but I really, really, really wanted to talk about the human body. But that is it for today. Thank you for watching, as always. And uh, have a good one.